Hello friends, why are the fox populations are so invasive in Australia? The first problem that no one can explain. Maybe the living environment in Australia is good and suitable for their development. Or is it due to the survival instinct of this species? Here is the video. Please comment number one if you like this content. The growth of Australia's rich fox population has created a challenging story while also dramatically changing the country's ecological landscape. It was first introduced in 1859 by English shepherds. The rich fox was expected to play a role in controlling agricultural pests, such as rats and rabbits. However, the reality has shown that the red foxes not only adapt to new environments, but also grow at amazing rates, creating major challenges for Australian communities and ecosystems. According to Australian government estimates, the red fox population currently stands at around 23 million, a staggering number equivalent to approximately one fox for every two Australians. Their growth rate is uneven and rapid, with an increased rate of up to 100-fold in the 100 years since their introduction to Australia. The red foxes are widely distributed across mainland Australia and exists of all types of habitats from forests and savannas to deserts and coastal areas. These areas are famous for their growing agricultural economies, full of plants, rodents, and birds. The abundance of food and favorable habitats makes rich foxes like to live and hunt here. Big cities like Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, and Perth are not only crowded with people but also an ideal environment for red foxes. Highly population density, food diversity, and urban environments creates an interesting homeland for this animal. Pre-urban areas around big cities are a wonderful combination of urban and nature. Trees, bushes, and other plants creates a diverse and attractive habitat for red foxes. Abundant food from garbage and small animals makes this area an ideal place to live. In addition, there are other special areas in Australia where red foxes often gather, such as agricultural areas and Victoria State or suburban areas in Sydney and Melbourne. These locations all have unique environmental characteristics, creating a favorable condition for the life and reproduction of red foxes. These lands are not only where red foxes live, but also a symbol of harmony between the city and nature, demonstrating the class and diversity of the green continent, Australia. Due to the development of wild rabbits, red fox populations have strongly invaded Australia. As of now, the wild rabbit population in Australia is becoming increasingly strong. The red foxes, being omnivorous, often eat wild rabbits. Each year, a red fox can consume about 10 wild rabbits. This makes wild rabbits the main food source for red foxes in Australia. In particular, 
with rapid reproduction and a lack of natural predators, the red fox population in Australia has increased sharply, estimated to be about 23 million according to the Australian government. This increase is posing serious challenges to Australia's ecosystem, including risks to native animals and natural landscapes. Dealing with invasive fox populations has many limitations. One of the greatest risks of day hunting is the danger it poses to both the hunter and others in the area. Target identification in daylight can become difficult, increasing the risk of accidentally shooting another person or an animal. This poses a significant challenge to the safety of everyone participating in this activity. In addition, the use of hunting equipment during hunting also creates negative impacts on the environment. Pollution and effects on natural ecosystems are inevitable. This disturbance can have a huge impact affecting the natural balance and reproduction of many types of animals and plants. In Australia, red fox populations are facing pressure from hunting and human encroachment, with approximately 500,000 hunters involved in hunting red foxes. This number is still not enough to effectively control this population. This poses a challenge to manage and protect red fox populations, an important part of the Australian ecosystem. The skills required to engage in invasive fox hunting requires intense attention and concentration on the part of the hunter. Safe and accurate gun handling skills, observation skills to detect targets, along with the ability to move safely in a forest environment are important factors. In addition, having a hunting license from the Australian government is also mandatory. Regulating the use of guns and ammunition as well as safety rules when participating in hunting activities. The number of foxes a hunter can hunt each day varies depending on their geographical area, despite the high flexibility. The limits of the number of foxes a hunter can hunt in a day are intended to maintain balance and not unduly impact the red fox population. Hunting with foxes at night has become the Australian government's management strategy for invasive fox populations since the 1950s. However, this practice faces many difficulties and limitations, making management difficult. Hunters who are allowed to do this often choose at time at night because red foxes are often most active at this time. They use flashlights to search for and approach targets, carry out hunting or capture foxes. However, these efforts face major problems and limitations. One of the important limitations is that hunting at night is not very effective. Work is limited to reducing a small portion of the red fox population. The decrease in efficiency occurs due to the fox's ability to reproduce rapidly, making it possible for them to regenerate vigorously after each hunting campaign. Not only that, but the use of guns and traps during hunting not only endangers the hunter but also negatively affects the environment. Environmental pollution from the use of guns and ammunition is a challenge facing the Australian government. By 2023, the number of red foxes in Australia has increased 
from 2 million in 1950 to 23 million. This significant increase indicates that hunting at night is not sufficient to control invasive fox populations. This poses a major challenge and requires creativity in developing more effective management strategies. Waruda wild boars has become the most invasive species in Canada. Let's continue watching to get to know exactly why. These pigs roam the fields completely freely taking advantage of and destroying the months of farming effort that farmers have put in to prepare for the harvest season. This situation not only harms agricultural output, but can also seriously impact local food supplies and agricultural resources. Another impact of the harmful wild boar situation is the heavy pollution of many water sources. Wild boars roaming freely in search of food can lead to digging deeper into the ground and making water sources dirtier and more polluted. This threatens the sustainability of water source systems and ecosystem structures and creates an additional challenge facing farmers and resource managers. Wild boar hunting in the fields of America is truly a special and indispensable event in the agriculture and hunting culture of this country. Hunters from everywhere gather in the vast grasslands to participate in this sweetie hunt. They not only bring professional and modern hunting equipment, but also unite with the farmers here to negotiate and discuss thoroughly about tactics and how to conduct the hunt. Consensus in planning and implementation is an indispensable factor, ensuring that no wild boar has a chance to escape from the information network and tactics of the hunting team. Hunters must know how to use terrain and information from local farmers to predict wild boar behavior. Hunters require extreme patience and discipline to participate in this hunt. The convoys began to enter the field, each person choosing his own position to observe and hunt most effectively. Hunting dogs play an important role in finding traces of wild boars. They are ready to chase and attack their prey before it has a chance to escape. Hunters in strategic locations will ensure to not have a single pig escaping their skillful hands using sophisticated hunting tools. It is expected that by 2022, there will be about 9.5 million wild boars captured in the US, even though that the wild boar population is still increasing rapidly, so a series of other measures must be introduced. Wild boars escapes into the surrounding forests, taking advantage of the protection of the natural environment. They are very smart and know how to wait for an opportunity before returning to the field.
Cage trapping is known for producing more profitable and cost-effective harvest than hunting. And yes, look at the results. These wild boars will be processed and given to other areas as gifts. What do you think about these methods of dealing with wild boars? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's explore some other measures to deal with wild boars. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.